Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Uh, today I'm playing around some cardboard and shockingly, uh, things don't go as planned. Now things were doing fine for a while, but then when I put the title on this, uh, that's when things did not go as planned. I had a hard time with it and wait till you see how many ways, how many times I tried to fix it and then what I wanted to do at the very end, which was the thing I was trying to avoid in the beginning. Yeah, it was one of those kinds of days. I started with this piece of cardboard. Now this cardboard was packing material that just made me about squeal with delight when I saw those three cutouts in it already done, because those screamed windows to me. I decided this needed a little more color, a little more stuff on it, so I just grabbed some paint and brushes and I'm putting it on here. You might be wondering how I can so easily make the decisions about where to put things. Well, I have a carefully created design matrix that's based in scientific formulas for where to put the colors and how to make decisions. Okay, I can barely keep a straight face saying that. There is no complex design matrix. This isn't a scientific method. What this boils down to is I'm trying to cover up all signs of brown cardboard because I'm not a fan of brown. So that's what's guiding me as I'm doing this. So once I've got that cardboard all covered up, why do I keep going? Well, because it's fun. I'm just having a good time moving that color around, getting my fingers in the paint. The paint that I'm using is an acrylic gouache, and you might be wondering why I chose that over a regular acrylic. Well, it came down to the shape of the bottle because I love using these bottles. It allows me to put a small amount of paint out without a whole lot of thinking. See, I've got a lead foot, so when I squeeze a paint tube, I tend to squirt copious amounts of it out. And if I just want to have a little bit out, it's easier for me in these bottles. If I was wise, I would let this completely dry. But well, I'm not that wise today, so yeah, something's going to happen because of that. I'm going to use a yellow gel print to create the background of the windows. And I want to put some silhouettes in there of some very fun people. Now this is Silas and Sigmund. This is one of my new stencils from over at Stencil Girl Products. Since only part of it's gonna be showing in the window, I don't have to stencil the whole thing, just the part that I want sticking out in the window. And I'm gonna spread them out here on the paper, that way I can easily cut out enough of it to go in each window. So what's the story behind Silas and Sigmund? Well, these two characters are like vaudeville stage managers of our lives who just can't seem to take things too seriously. Silas is on the bottom and he's trying to corral all the everyday happenings, the feelings, the thoughts, while Sigmund is perched on top to get the best view of the show we call our lives. This stencil also includes three masks with it. So you've got Silas and Sigmund, the big ones, you get that as a mask. You've also got the three Siluses stacked on top of each other. That's another mask. And then the last mask are the five Sigmunds stacked together. You'll notice I'm not doing very careful cutting here. There's no measuring. This is just make it bigger than what the opening's going to be. And that's why I'd spread them out so far on the paper so I wouldn't have to worry about measuring. And then it's the fiddling stage. This is where I'm trying to get them precisely positioned in that window. As if anything about this has been precise, but for whatever reason, I'm feeling the precision thing happening here. Once I've got them where I want them, then it's very fancy, tape them to the back. Now I'm using artist tape here, but masking tape, scotch tape, washi tape, whatever kind of tape you've got, you just stick them on there. To get the title and words on here, I'm gonna use another stencil that I created for over at Stencil Girl, and this one's called It's Time to Play. It's got a whole bunch of quotes about play on here, and the one I'm using is from George Dorsey, and it's play is the beginning of knowledge. I want to get a pretty crisp image for this one. I want to have some careful and precise stenciling. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to do to help myself. One of them is to go in an up and down motion. If I go straight up and down, that's going to help give me a crisp image. And the other thing is to use a very small amount of paint. Less paint, the better it is if you want a crisp and clear image. You also want the paint underneath to be, well, dry. That's really important too if you want a crisp image. Now just because I know this in my head doesn't mean that's always what happens in the play. So I know how to do crisp and clear stenciling and it's so not going to happen here. Oh, and by the way, if there's ever any place where you feel like it's a little tight to do the stenciling, you just take something like a piece of paper or post-it note and quickly mask off that area and you can keep it right on going. But I had too much paint on my cosmetic sponge 
and the paint underneath was not completely dry. So those two, those two things working together meant that it just didn't come out as crisp as what I wanted it to be. But never fear, there's an easy fix for this. I'm simply gonna put the stencil right back on top of it, best if you wait for everything to completely dry, and then I'm gonna go over it with another color. This time I chose to use white, and I'm gonna make sure that I've got a small amount of paint on there, because if you want clear and crisp images, one of the biggest tricks is to just make sure you have a small amount of paint. I'm gonna do this very carefully. I'm gonna go in an up and down motion, and even though it's gonna stencil neatly and precisely, I'm not gonna like it. I don't like how this looks whatsoever. It's an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. And I'm just, yeah, I just don't like it in white. So I'm thinking maybe I'll put a little bit of black on top of it. Maybe do a little bit of tracing, that kind of stuff. So I've got a really fine tip brush here and as I'm going over it, man, I'm just like, ooh, I hate this. I do not like it one bit. So what am I gonna do now? Well, I'm just gonna erase it. I'm gonna take a baby wipe to it and I'm just gonna start rubbing stuff around. So it turns out things were a little drier than what I thought, so even with the baby wipe, I can't get it all to come up. So what am I gonna do? Well, I will tell you this, before this is all done, it's gonna go through a couple more attempts. I'm gonna put black back on here, but this time I'm actually gonna stencil carefully. I'm gonna use a small amount of paint and I'm gonna go in that up and down motion. I'm making sure that I'm using a small amount of paint because I'm not even going to reload the cosmetic sponge at all. I'm gonna go across all three of these words on with a, just the paint that's on that cosmetic sponge. And what I'm gonna get is a much crisper stenciling job. Now, since you can't see my face, you're just watching my hands here, there's a look of very serious concentration on my face at this moment because I have to really think about what I'm doing to use that small amount of paint and go carefully. And it's all nice and crisp, but guess what? I don't like it at all. The old me, before I understood the power of play, would have beaten myself up senseless from this, from having made so many mistakes, screwing so much of this stuff up. I mean, I in my head, it would have been like I'd committed some kind of crime. Once I understood the power of play, there was no more beating myself up. There was no more of this crazy pressure to get everything right the first time. And it was about the freedom to play, about the process, the joy, the fun of making. If you wanna have more fun, you wanna have more play, and you're looking for ideas of how to do that, I've got a free workshop called Permission to Play that's got very specific strategies for how you can let go and let yourself play. You can find all of that in the link down below or over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com. And yes, you guessed it, I'm gonna stencil these words yet again on here, but this time I'm going on top of those three colors of paint that are not completely dry. In fact, the green is super wet still. So what risk am I taking by stenciling over damp or wet paint? Well, the first thing is, is it may not be as crisp of a stenciling. And the second thing is, is well, the colors may mix together. So you'll notice how when I did the of, it's got a little bit of an orange look to it because there was a bunch of orange paint that was still wet. As I'm doing knowledge here, you can see how the green paint is mixing in with it because well, it was still very, very wet. So this is kind of a risky stenciling. It may not be crisp and clear because of those factors, but I got lucky. This time it's really crisp and clear even with all of that wet paint. And this is where I have to laugh at myself because I got that crisp and clear stenciling and guess what? I didn't like it. I wanted a messy look to it. So I'm taking a dip pen here and I'm just kind of going around it trying to mess it up, scratch it up, give it a bit of a grungy, worn and weathered look instead of that crisp stenciling. And for the final touch, I'm gonna to take a Stabilo pencil here and I'm just gonna outline around the windows. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you wanna know any of the specific supplies that I used here in this video, you can find them all over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. And did you have fun while you were watching this? Did you enjoy it? Well, if so, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.